Hi, in this module, I'm going to talk about Gibbs sampling, a simple algorithm for approximately computing marginal probabilities in the So recall that a Markov network is based on a factor graph. And uh, a factor graph gives a weight to every possible assignment of variables in that factor graph. And a Markov network will convert that weight into a probability by first computing the normalization constant, which is the sum over the, all the assignments of the weight of that assignment, divide by that normalization constant, and we get uh, the probability of uh, assignment little x. So in this object tracking example, we see uh, we have um, a bunch of different assignments, their weights, the partition function in this case is 26, we divide each of these weights by 26, and we get um, these probabilities. So the cool thing with Markov networks is that you can compute marginal probability. And that's going to be our focus today. So marginal probability um, is going to be focusing on one particular variable, xi, and asking what values could it take on. And to get that, we're going to sum over all possible assignments where xi does actually equal p of the joint probability of that assignment. And in this example, um, if you look and ask for the probability of x2 equals 1, you sum over all the rows where x2 equals 1, that gives you uh, 0.62. And if you ask for x2 equals 2, uh, then you're summing over the last two rows, and that gives you. So now let me present Gibbs sampling which is a simple algorithm for approximately computing these marginal. You could iterate over all possible assignments and compute, but that would take exponential time. So Gibbs sampling is going to follow the template of local search, where we're going to go through each variable one at a time and update them. But unlike iterated conditional modes, which we saw before, Gibbs sampling is a randomized algorithm which is tailored for the purpose of computing marginal. So let's present the algorithm now. So we're going to initialize the assignment to some completely random assignment. And then we're going to loop through each of the variables until convergence, which I'll talk about a little bit later. We're going to set the assignment xi equals v with this probability, the probability of xi equals v given um, x minus i equals x minus i. So this my x minus i notation just refers to all the variables except for xi. So I'll come back to this in a second, but let me just highlight the kind of the general flow of the algorithm. So suppose you have three variables. Gibbs sampling is going to try to sample x1, holding the other ones fixed. And now it's going to move on to x2, holding the others fixed, and update x2, and then go to x3. And then it's going to cycle back to x1, x2, x3, and so on. So now, how do I sample xi equals v? So um, here is one example. So what we're going to do is we're going to try uh, assigning xi equals v and getting some weight. So for every possible assignment of x2, I'm going to get some weight. And now, remember in ICM, I would just simply take the value that produced the largest weight. But the main difference with Gibbs sampling is that I'm going to take these weights and I'm going to normalize them to produce a probability. Again, normalizing is summing these values, and I get 5, and dividing by 5 to get probability 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 4. And now I'm going to sample x2 equals one of these values according to this probability distribution. So you can visualize that sampling process by um, the interval from 0 to 1, where I have a number of segments representing the different possible values of x2. And the length is uh, exactly the probability. So probability of x2 equals 0, probability of x2 equals uh, 1, and probability of x2 equals 2. And then I'm going to throw a one-dimensional dart at this, um, at this line. I'm going to hit it somewhere, and I'm going to take whatever value uh, is uh, specified by that. 
Okay, so now I have a, a new value for um, x2 here, and now I proceed to the next variable and so on and so forth. So, so that um, produces a sequence of samples um, of the assignments. And the main remaining thing to do is to aggregate them. So I'm going to, uh, every time I go through this uh, loop, I'm going to increment a counter for variable i of the particular value that I, I saw. Okay, so, and at the very end, I'm going to compute an estimate, p e hat, of um, xi equals uh, x, little xi, and this is going to be simply the normalized version of, of the count. So this is going to be the relative frequency of seeing a particular value, little xi, uh, compared to you know, everything else I've seen. Okay. So there's a lot, a lot of counting and normalizing. Um, in so let's look at this demo to uh, give us a, kind of a more fuller sense of what's going on. Okay, so here is the object tracking example. I have three variables. And here I'm going, I can specify the query, which is which variable am I interested in calculating the marginal of. And I'm going to run Gibbs sampling here. Um, and then at the beginning, I sample a variable x1, uh, given everything else. So consider all the possible values of x1. Um, I'm going to look at their potentials uh, or factors, compute a weight, normalize to get a distribution, and I'm going to sample a value according to these probabilities. So this, in this case, is just a coin flip. I choose x1 equals 0. And then I update my counter. So I'm recording that I saw x2 uh, equals 1 once. Okay, and then I'm going to move on to the next variable, x2, do the same thing, um, move to the next variable, x3, and do the same thing. And I'm going to just cycle for this uh, for a moment. You can see that um, the, the assignment, which is depicted up here, is changing. Um, and down here, um, I can see that the count of the number of times x1, uh, x2 equals 1, has gone up to 25. Um, and now look, I actually hit a different value. X, I went to a configuration where x2 equals 2 now. Um, and then I might sample a little bit more, and they'll come back to 1. Um, and you can just watch this for a, a little while. And you can see over here that these are the estimates of the marginal probability of x2 based on the counts. So these numbers are simply these. Uh, a normalized version of these counts. Um, so I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So let me do just a thousand steps at a time. Okay, so now I have a thousand, if I did a thousand steps of Gibbs sampling, now I have a lot of counts of x2 uh, equals 1, some counts of uh, x2 equals 2, and now you can see um, the probabilities are kind of converging to something like 0. 0.6 and 0. 0.3. Let me just hit a uh, step a few more times. And you can see that these probabilities are indeed converging to 0.61, which, uh, if you remember from here, is pretty close to the true marginal probability. Okay, so it seems, you know, at first glance, kind of a wild thing, right? So we're running this algorithm, it's just generating samples left and right, it's kind of random. And yet, if I compute, the randomness is very carefully are orchestrated so that when I sum things up properly, I actually get the, the right answer out. So let me now go to the image denoising example. So here the goal is to, you're given a, a noisy image, clean it up. And in our simplified version, I have um, xi, which represents the clean pixel value, which I don't know. Now, a subset of the pixels are observed. So for example, these um, in green here. And I'm going to clamp those pixel values to the observed value. And then I have a, a factor that says neighboring pixels are twice as likely to be the same than different. So 
So let's do Gibbs sampling in this image denoising case. So what Gibbs sampling would do is it's going to sweep across the image and sample each variable condition on the left. So uh, suppose I'm landing on this particular uh, pixel value, and I'm trying to figure out what should its value be. So again, I look at the possible values. It could be 0 or 1. And for each value, I'm going to compute a weight. So remember from ICM that I actually don't need to compute the weight of the entire assignment. I just only need to look at the factors which are dependent on this value. Okay, so let's consider V equals zero. So here, if I put zero here, that means this potential is going to be happy because V is agree and I'm gonna get a two. Um, and this one is going to disagree. Um, this one's gonna disagree and this one disagree. So the weight is two times one times one times one, which is two. So now if I try to put a one in this position, now, um, this uh, potential says one, while the others say two. So now that has a weight of eight. So now to get the probability of xi equals v, given everything else, I'm simply going to sum up and normalize. So I have two and eight here. The normalization constant uh, is 10. So I get probabilities 0.2 and 0.8. Now, given this distribution, I'm going to set this value to one with probability 0.8 and zero with probability 0.2. And then I'm gonna keep on going. So here is a fun little demo of Gibbs sampling for image denoising that runs in your browser. Okay, so the idea is that here is an image and if you uh, hit control enter here, um, you'll see that this is the input uh, to the system. So we have black pixels and red pixels. These are the observed pixels. And white pixels are unobserved. And these are the ones that we want to fill in. So there's a bunch of settings we'll talk to about in a second. But if you click here, you can see how, get a feeling for what Gibbs sampling is doing. Um, each frame here, each iteration, is a full pass over all uh, the pixels. And you can see that it's kind of dancing around because it's trying to explore um, different uh, assignments. So one thing you can do is um, you can set show marginals equals true. And what this does is that instead of visualizing the assignment at a particular iteration, for each uh, pixel here, I'm actually visualizing the marginal probability estimate. So this is in general going to be a number between zero and one, which is represented as a shade between black and red here. So this in some sense is the kind of best guess at what the reconstruction um, is. So there are a number of things you can play with. So for example, the fraction of missing pixel. If I reduce this to, let's say, uh, 0.3, then um, you know, the problem becomes easier. And you can see that the reconstruction gets um, you know, pretty reasonable results. Um, another fun thing you can play with is, um, well, actually, let me, let me uh, bring down the map, uh, bring up the map missing fraction to one. Okay, so that means I don't see any pixel. So here, um, this is just going to be, actually, I mean, let me do that. Uh, show marginals equals false. Oops. Um, so here, you can see kind of just blind samples from um, the model. Okay, and if I bump up the coherence, uh, if I bump it down, um, then you'll see kind of a more random pattern. If I bump it up to 10, then you'll see kind of more coherence. So remember, this is kind of like the phase transitions that we saw for the easy. Okay, so I will let you uh, play with this on your own. So let me just conclude here. Uh, actually, one thing before we conclude. So let me try to go back to iterated conditional modes and compare that with Gibbs sample. Both of them have the same kind of template. You're working with complete assignments and you're going through each variable and updating the assignment to that variable one at a time. But there's a few differences here. One, the first salient one is that iterative conditional modes was for solving CSPs where we're trying to find the maximum weight assignment. Gibbs sampling is for Markov networks where we're trying to compute marginal probabilities. 
So as a consequence for ICM, we at each step, we're choosing the value to sign to a variable which maximizes its weight. Whereas in Gibbs sampling, we're using the weights to form a distribution and sampling from that distribution. In ICM, we notice that um, the algorithm does converge, but often to a local optimum, which is not the best um, maximum weight assignment. For Gibbs sampling, as you can see from these samples, there's no traditional notions of convergence. The, the samples are gonna keep on changing and keep on changing. So the, the iterates are not the ones which are converging. What is actually gonna converge are the marginal estimates. And in, under some technical assumptions, these estimates are actually going to converge to the correct answer. We saw that for object tracking. It did a pretty good job there. Um, but there are some technical conditions. Um, one sufficient condition is that all the weights uh, be positive. But more uh, generally, what we need is that for the probability of going from one assignment to another assignment via Gibbs sampling has positive probability. Because if you have two disconnected um, regions, then you can't, if you start a Gibbs sampling at one particular point, then you will never reach the other point. So one important caveat is Gibbs sampling is wonderful, but it, in the worst case, it does take exponential time. So these are really, computing marginal probabilities is a really hard problem, and Gibbs sampling is just you know, a heuristic with some um, nice asymptotic guarantee. So wrapping up, um, we looked at computing the marginal probabilities of uh, a Markov network. And we saw that Gibbs sampling did this by sampling one variable at a time, and it counts visitations to each of uh, the values for a given uh, variable. And it's one of these kind of astonishing things that Gibbs sampling is so carefully constructed that it actually kind of works, and you can prove lots of interesting theorems about it. Finally, Gibbs sampling is just the first taste of a much more broad class of techniques called uh, Markov Chain Monte Carlo, which are used to um, and produce uh, much kind of richer ways of estimating probabilities in Markov. All right, that's the end of this module.